Desmond lifts one high in the air to left. This ball is coming down in the seats. Eight wins in the last nine. Three games over 500 for the first time since early July. The Mets in town this weekend. Dylan G and Jordan Zimmerman in game one. And the boys keep this roll going at Nationals Park. Free t-shirts. Thanks to our friends at American University tonight. And a big crowd expected as the Mets come to town. Holiday weekend underway. The Nats are three games over 500 and a lot of things going right for this ball club right now. Pitching, the offense, the defense. It's all working together. So... Maybe the pitcher is the most important guy because he starts the game with the ball. But maybe that shortstop's a real key. And the Nats have a pretty good quarterback out there right now. Well, he's been doing it. He's been leading by example. But he's also been doing it with the offense. When you talk about Ian Desmond and what he's done the last couple of seasons, only Carlos Gonzalez and Mike Trout, the only guys in baseball the last two years to be 2020 guys. Ian Desmond just two steals shy of doing it for the second straight year. And when you look at what he's done offensively for this team, games 130 that's first. Hits 140. That's first. Doubles 33. That's first. RBI 67 first. Runs 67 first. And he's leading them in steals with 18. So Ian Desmond has been walking the talk. And it's not just about the numbers either. It's about the way he's approached the game on a daily basis. Yeah, and he's the number five or six guy as a rule. The first four are doing an amazing job. Is it Span getting on base? Zimmerman second. Harper driving in runs or Jason Worth doing everything? Those four guys in the 9 nothing win last night were on base 11 times. Yeah, it all starts at the top of the order when you talk about the resurgence of the Nats offense. I mean, third in the National League in the month of office in, in, in offense for the month with four runs plus a game. So they're getting the job done on offense. They're pitching well. They're playing defense. And this is the streak that Nats fans and everybody in that first base dugout has been waiting for all year. Jordan Zimmerman hoping to keep it going. He could become the first 16-game winner in the National League. 3-3-2 ERA, start number 27. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Kia. Visit Kia.com and learn why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. From the Anacostia to the first base gate out to center field, people are excited 
about what this ball club is doing right now. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. So the humidity reasonable. It's 88 degrees. Warm day in the district. The Mets are 13th in the league in batting average at only 239, but they're seventh in runs. Daniel Murphy's done a lot of damage against Jordan and against the Nats. Three home runs against Zimmerman career. You might notice David Wright is out, strained his right hamstring August 3rd, and they're just not sure if he'll be able to play again this season. 7.05, first pitch right on time, and Zimmerman misses outside to the speedy Eric Young. Young hitting 250 for the Mets. He's at 255. And here's Jordan Zimmerman making his 15th career start against New York. He's on his third pitch already. We haven't even had time to introduce him. Getting it and going tonight. Last time out. The 7 2 win Saturday at Kansas City. His 15th of the year tied with Adam Wainwright for the league lead. Went seven and two thirds. Gave up eight hits, two runs. And struck out seven and walked one through 114 pitches. So fastball, curveball, slider change is what Eric Young Jr. seeing right now from Jordan Zimmerman. EY Jr., two for three career with a walk against Zimmerman. And he misses inside when breaking ball. Fifth year veteran, Brian Knight has the plate. Mark Carlson, 14th year. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, 30th year. And 12 year man, Dan Isanya, on the basis. Mets are 60 and 72, then at 68 and 65. And that's a 3 2 pitch that was close and just missed. I see where this one missed. Eric Young Jr., very small strike zone. Not like he's 6 5. Call goes the Mets way right there in a leadoff walk. That'll bring in Daniel Murphy, who is sixth in the National League with hits, 150 of them. And Young on the move, and Ramos can't get a handle. Eric Young has now stolen 24 bases for the Mets and 32 on the year. He has really been turned loose by Terry Collins. Well, that's a career high for him in stolen bases. His father, Eric Young, had 30 or more stolen bases nine times in his career. And the Youngs are the fifth father-son pair to each swipe 30 stolen bases in a season. Let's see if you can name the other ones, Carp, without looking at the notes. Father's sons? Yes. What about Maury and Bump Wills? That's one. <laughs> really? Yes. Mm, that was a wild guess that's on my part. Pretty good. I would. That's the one I would have struggled with. Alamars, the Bonzes is, is and the Cruises is, is, is. Nice. Jose Sr. and Jose Jr. Murphy hits one to center. Pretty deep. Span after it. And right at the edge of the track, he'll take it, but Eric Young goes to third base. Hey, I'll, I'll give you an A-plus on that answer just for getting the wills. That was outstanding. It set the defense for the Nats behind Zimmerman. Harper span worth your outfield. Desmond Zimmerman left side. Rendon LaRoche right side. And once again, the Buffalo behind the dish, Wilson Ramos. So the Mets get a runner to scoring position immediately. Good news for Zimmerman and the Nats. You're not facing David Wright. It's Andrew Brown. 280 hitter in his first 100 at bats this year. Andrew Brown, 28 years of age. And the Mets signed him as a minor league free agent back in January. Hit three. 40 at Las Vegas this year. Major League time previously with St. Louis and Colorado. Pass ball up and away, and this ball's popped up. LaRoche, Rendon. It'll be Anthony Rendon in foul ground. Just has to fire it home to send that runner back two down. And I'm telling you something. There is a vibe in this ballpark that maybe we haven't felt in a while. The fans are into every pitch so far and cheering loudly on the first two outs of the game. There's a feeling that's different around here. Agreed. Plus, free stuff never hurts. Giving away a t-shirt. 
No, but it's, this place has been bouncing for a good half hour already. The vibe, the atmosphere, usually on Friday nights is electric, but you know, multiply that by about 10 tonight and just get get a feel that something different's going on, and it is. Here's Zyke Davis. And a breaking ball. Out to left, and Bryce Harper there, and Jordan Zimmerman pitches around the leadoff walk to steal and a runner at third with one down. Batting average at a season high 249 now. A lot of production last night. Starting lineup brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. So Wilson Ramos, the most productive Matt, at least from a batting average standpoint, against the Mets. Not only on our ball club, but anybody who faces New York. Wilson catching every night. And here's Dylan G. Ten career games, four starts against the Nats, six and two with a 2.86 ERA. But the last time he pitched here, July 27th, he gave up three home runs. And the last time he pitched, he took the loss in the Mets, 11 to three loss against the Tigers on the 25th. It's six innings, allowed four runs, season high, seven, ten hits, struck out two and walked two, 108 pitches, 65 for strikes. Desmond Spann and Harper went deep in that game to the right side a pretty good scoop by Ike Davis who's very smooth over there and Dylan G covering in good fashion for the first down. Well stay with me here this is literally meet the Mets young Ligaris Brown the outfield Quintanilla Flores left side Murphy Davis right side and Darno behind the plate. Yeah they like that young catcher. And Wilmer Flores more of a pretty good bat rather than a defensive guy over third base spelling David Wright. David Wright by the way is down in Port St. Lucie rehabbing that hamstring but the Mets are kind of doubtful he'll be able to play. Here's Ryan Zimmerman from David Wright's old neighborhood and the fastballs in there. He's four for 22 with four walks career against Dylan G. And of course the Mets dealt to blow this week with Matt Harvey and that whole situation. If Matt Harvey can't pitch next year. The Mets will have to hold on to some of their young arms in the organization that they were thinking about moving maybe for a position player or two. They've got pitching depth in the organization but they don't have anything to speak of. As far as position players, so Harvey lost for the year what they're calling a partial tear of the ulnar collateral ligament. That's still in between whether he's going to have that operated on and go with the big TJ surgery or just rehab it. One ball, two strikes to Zimmerman. Off speed pitch inside. I guess they're waiting for the swelling to go down and then they are able to take a better look at that ligament to determine which way to go. 
And with the success that you're having with Tommy John surgery nowadays, you'd think, you know, a lot of people say, get it done, get it over with, and come back stronger than you were. Zimmerman chops that fair ball, and from behind the bag, a pretty good play by Wilmer Flores. Two outs. One well, thing Flores did well right there is throw that ball right over the top. Whenever you go to the backhand side at third base, especially in foul territory, you really got to fight to get on top. Because that's a long throw across the diamond. If you get a three-quarter release right here, what's going to happen is the ball's going to run up the line. And it's going to be a tough play for the first baseman. But you see how Flores right there really got on top of that baseball, kept that true 12-6 rotation. The ball stayed straight. And a long throw to get Ryan Zimmerman. Nice play. Bases empty, two outs for Bryce Harper, who's on a career high 11 game hitting streak. First double digit streak of his career. And Bryce went opposite field for the second time this week. Yeah, change up down away. Very easy swing. Barreled it up. And it wasn't like the wind was blowing out to left. Just smoothed it out to the flowers in left field. It was 19th home run of the year, and some high fives and a helmet taken off from. A guy that would homer later in the game. One ball, one strike to Harper. Batting average up to 280. On base percentage up to 379. He's three for five with a home run against Dylan G. Fastball away. See, that's the pitch G wants you to swing at right there. Chase that two seamer down the way. Hit a ground ball, beat it into the dirt. That's a good take, borderline pitch. A little bit higher, but still outside. And now Bryce Harper in what we might call a power count at three and one. And G not afraid to throw the changeup in this count either. He'll throw it anytime, anywhere. Lives off the changeup, probably his best pitch. Not a whole lot of mystery here. G facing the Nats for the fifth time this year. Jordan Zimmerman, the Mets, for the fourth time. Say it's the same old G. <laughs> Nats lead the season series seven to five and four out of six here. Had Bryce reaching with an off speed pitch. You called it. Bryce grounded it. And Daniel Murphy threw him out. No score. The weekend against the Mets underway. Side. No score. Mets have the game's only runner. 5 6 7 due up for them. Second inning presented by Luna. Call for the Luna double this weekend. Get your second room of flooring free. 877 241 Luna. With last night's win, the Nats are now 10 over 500 at home. Jordan Zimmerman's been great at home all year and really throughout his career. So even with the leadoff walk, he only threw 12 pitches first inning. Juan Lagares, the center field. Man leads off, and that's in there. He's on a four-game hitting streak. 
And he's two for three career with a walk against Zimmerman. 24 year old outfielder from Constanza of the Dominican Republic signed with the Mets at the age of 17. The guy can really play center field plays shallow has a great arm covers a lot of ground out there. Plus defender. Still kind of learning the strike zone at the major league level but a guy with a serious upside. Yeah, one of the things the Mets are shopping for is a power hitting outfielder. Marlon Byrd gone, John Buck gone, traded this week to Pittsburgh. And Jordan shows him something in the dirt on 02, Terry Collins Ball Club. 20 and a half back of Atlanta. They're 10 under at home, but they played better on the road, 32 and 34 away from City Field. And he's still learning his players. I mean, they're calling up guys from AAA. He's trying to figure out what they can do at the major league level. They play that month of September. Talked to Terry today, caught up with him. He's trying to learn his ball club because it's brand new. Breaking ball, no swing, says Mark Carlson. All right, help me out. What do you think? No shot. He held. Challenge fastball and Desmond elevates to grab it. That ball was roasted. And rising too, right? Seemed like it. He doesn't make that play. That thing might go to the bullpen fence. Yeah, that might have had two, maybe three bases written on it. How hard it was hit. If that gets over the head of Ian Desmond, look out. Just a low liner, but it looked like it was on the rise. Desmond with a leap, not a problem. Had to give with that ball a little bit because it's hit so hard. Nice play. That was well within his range on the vertical leap. You look at Ian Desmond, and you look at an athlete who probably could play any sport that he wanted to. Like, I have no idea what kind of cricket player he would yeah, be. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but I think he's pretty good at basketball. Gymnastics? No, too big. Too big for that. Rowing? Yes. Curling, he would be really good at, I think. You mock me, but you know <laughs> you agree with me. <laughs> 0 2 to Wilmer Flores, and that didn't last long. Jordan Zimmerman takes care of him. Five in a row now. Since that leadoff walk. 95 and watch the run back fastball right here. Jordan Zimmerman doesn't throw a two seamer. He throws a four seam fastball, but a lot of times he throws it so hard and gets inside of it just enough to get that swing back run to catch the front corner. And that's just to hang with him. There's not a whole lot any right hander can do with that pitch. Here's an intriguing young catcher the Mets got from Toronto with John Buck and a couple of other guys when they traded R.A. Dickey. And two catchers to the Blue Jays, Josh Tolley and Mike Nickius, 24 year old Travis Darno, brother of Chase Darno with the Pirates, who are both from Long Beach and played at Lakewood High School out there. They think this young man's going to be a very good receiver. Bit of a scuffle at the big league level 10 games, 3 out of 28. Originally drafted by the Phillies. And then to Toronto in the Roy Halladay deal back in 09. So he's been a part of some big trades. And Zimmerman just shows him that slider outside to count 0 2. Trying to paint with a fastball. Ramos tried to frame it. Kickball? Yes. Highlight? Yes. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody from Florida who's a great athlete knows about Highlight. Oh, dodgeball king for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and a bouncing ball to Mr. Whatever Sport He Wants to Play, Baseball for Gymnastics. One, two, three. Jason Orth, followed by Desmond and LaRoche. No score early.
1-800-242-6456. AFSIA, the Association for Global Security Professionals. And Julie with our sideline report. Good evening. Hey, good evening, guys. Well, Jason Worth is someone who has never backed down in the face of adversity, and he's also someone who has never had any doubt that this team has what it takes to make a run at the postseason. And last night, in talking to him, he likened the expectations this team had placed on itself, sort of like a hangover. He said, we're just now shaking it off. We're just now coming out of it. We're playing good baseball, which we haven't been able to play consistently all year. And so he said, we're not going to back down. We're going to keep on going. There is plenty of time to do a crazy thing. I love that. And he also said, the way we're doing it right now, to get hot late, that's the best way to make it in. Well, look at uh, the, what, last three world champions coming out of the National League. How well were the Giants twice and the Cardinals peaking when it meant the most? Well, I talked to him today. I said, and it's sure fun to watch you play. And he said, well, it's fun to be me right now and play. And I said, well, I would know <laughs> fun nothing. Fun to be me, huh? Yeah, I would know nothing about that with the way you're playing. You're having a good time. It's nice to see. Well, worth 8 for 28 career. Three walks against Dylan G. In the next day or two, he'll be popping up in big fashion on the National League batting departmental leaders stat sheet. But right now, his 329 would be tied with Chris Johnson for second in the league, four points behind Yadier Molina. Pretty good slider by G right there. Runs that fastball back to the outside corner and worth caught looking. Mercedes Benz will show you some swing back action. Well, that like the strike three that Jordan Zimmerman just threw to Wilmer Flores. Little backdoor fastball. Came back, caught the outside corner. Watch G get inside of this ball. See the rotation just kind of bringing it back right there at the end to catch the outside corner. Perfect pitch. When you have to make your decision as a right-handed hitter whether to swing at that pitch or not, it is clearly outside. Fastball well outside to Ian Desmond. Doing it all right now. Last eight games, nine RBIs, eight runs with three homers, and he's 15 for 32. That one got near the trademark on his bat. Up and in. Let's go inside the numbers with STG Inc. And where he ranks on the ball club. I mean, first in almost everything. Amazing. And those 131 games played, they've all been played full speed. I mean, everything he does is hard, whether he's running out of ground ball. Stretching a single into a double. Scorn from first base on a gapper and, and like we noted you know, Breaking up that double play down by six runs in Kansas City the other night. And let's go back to last night and check out his 20th homer of the year two seam fastball in her half. It was a high fly ball that just carried out of here well, Usually his home runs are more of the line drive variety, but that one got underneath for home run number 20 Bouncer by the mound and up the middle for Omar Quintanilla. Two outs. Dylan G off to a good start here. Five in a row to start the game. And he'll face Adam LaRoche, who he's retired 14 out of 17 times. Become a 2014 season plan holder now. Receive bonus e-cash and multi-year price lot. These special offers expire September 30th. Go to nationals.com slash 2014. Some restrictions apply. And I can vouch for the fact that being a season plan holder with a ball club is a very good thing. Maybe some nights your tickets don't get used. You can cash them back in for future games. Take care of your friends, your family. It's a great way to see a lot of baseball in Nationals Park for a great price. No FP, none of my September tickets are available. So. Hey. I'll tell you what. 
If you came last night and saw the Red Rocker, you got your money's worth because that was, was some straight. kind of show. I'll tell you, I've been to every one of the concerts. They've all been fantastic, but the crowd last night was into it. He was fantastic, and it was some kind of atmosphere here at Nats Park during the game, but even more so after the game. 65 years old. You wouldn't know it. Two balls, one strike to Adam LaRoche. Mets put a big shift on. Nobody anywhere near third base. And he'll line one on the ground. Hit hard. That's the shortstop. Quintanilla playing up the middle. So a good first two innings for Dylan G. He's been tough on the Nets throughout his career. He's gave up three hits, struck out eight for his eighth win of the year, but didn't start out pretty. First inning, a couple hard hit balls, a walk and a base hit, pitched around it. Right in the ship about the third, and absolutely locked in. Cruise control after that. Went in the clubhouse between innings, and Rafael Soriano said, hey, it looks like your arm is dropping down. Get your arm up. He got on top of it, and the rest of the night was smooth sailing for Gio Gonzalez as you look at his numbers. ERA at 3.56 now, eight wins on the year, and there's the smile that hasn't always been there, quite frankly, this year. And it's nice to see a lot of smiles around the house lately. Gio told me today, if you would have told me, and I'm quoting him, that I was going to go seven innings on 109 pitches after the first two innings I had last night, I would have thought you were nuts. I mean, he was tremendous over those last five innings. Omar Quintanilla leads off. For the Mets, top of the third, 27 pitches. Nice ratio, 19 strikes for Jordan Zimmerman. Quintanilla hitting 221. He's three for eight with a walk against Jordan. And then Dylan G and Eric Young. By the way, that last play, last inning on LaRoche, that was the third baseman, Wilmer Flores, who leapfrogged. Quintanilla to play up the middle. Some teams do that. They'll leave their shortstop near that position and play the third baseman up the middle. That's what the Mets did on the Nationals' right handed hitter. This will be a simple play for Rendon. And now six straight for Jordan Zimmerman since walking Eric Young. The Nats won, scored seven or more runs last night. And today, 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code NATS50. When you go to PapaJohns.com, valid at participating D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia. Papa Johns. How pumped is Papa Johns that the offense hasn't been rolling like this all season? They are tossing some dough tonight. <laughs> That's on the corner. 0-2 to Dylan G., who's 6 for 47 this year. And a 129 career batter. He chops it. That ball stays fair somehow. Funny looking hops and Ramos pouncing right on it. 
Two down. I thought it was funny the ball stayed fair, but how do you make contact on that pitch? Nasty slider in the dirt. I don't know if he hit the ground first before he made contact or not. Just a little emergency 9-1-1 hack from Dylan G. And it's a low pitch. And look at the rotation that would make you think that that ball was going to kick foul, right? Inside out rotation, but it came back fair. Good play by Ramos. Top of the order, Eric Young walked on a borderline pitch first time, stole second, went to third on a fly ball. He was there with a one out to start the game, but Jordan went to work and popped up Andrew Brown and got Ike Davis to fly to Harper. Rendon waiting. Jordan's on one of those early game rolls where he's getting outs in a hurry. Nine straight in a scoreless game. Zimmerman, no score, either team with a base hit. And a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in the game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Cincinnati's at Colorado tonight. Bronson Arroyo, 13-9 against Jorge De La Rosa, 14-6. So we'll see how the Reds fare out there. The Nats on the verge of overtaking Arizona, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. Cincinnati is the target. And we'll see how they can do with a weekend at Coors Field. You know, watch the rundown today, and they had the percentage next of all these teams of if they're going to make the playoffs. That means either winning the division or being a wild card. Pirates, 95.9% chance. Reds, 87.8% chance. Diamondbacks, 10.1. And the Nats, 7.6. That was according to CoolStandings.com. Based on schedule strength, how the team's playing, whatever. So to quote FP, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> nice. Hey, that doesn't. Now, is, is there's this, intangibles in there that a computer can't spit out. That's what I'm percentages. saying. I mean, is this in, is this based on a bunch of opinions they have plugged in numbers or what? A bunch of different formulas and you plug it into a computer and that's what the percentages came out. But but for me, it's who's playing yeah. the best baseball right now. And I think there's no doubt that the team in white is playing some of the best baseball in Maybe all of baseball. There's Ramos, who we told you earlier, just clubs the Mets. He does it again. Bullpen. See you later. The Nats are on top. As if on cue, Ramos hits his ninth of the year. Buffalo. Desmond with the helmet off. High fives in the first base dugout. That wasn't as if on cue. That was totally on cue. A guy that's had absolute ownage against the Mets 
all season long continues right here and there goes the no hitter. Here's Anthony Rendon. Dylan G gives up his 21st homer of the year. Just caught a little slider out in front backed up on G. Ramos caught it out front pulled it. Put the Nats up one nothing. That is a strong young man. On a fastball up, Rendon inside out swing. But it's such a good shot. The last one we saw the spinning slider that didn't do much. This from the side just to show you the extension and the torque and how he used his lower half and even was fooled a little bit but kept his hands back just enough to ride that one out of here. Fastball inside to Anthony with Zimmerman on deck. Watch the rotation on the G slider. Just spinning right didn't break kind of backed up right onto the barrel. And G knew it you saw the reaction and Ramos. Strong like Buffalo. I really like it when he can protect that hamstring by going into a home run trot. Nats hit their 129th of the year. Slider away Rendon works the count with the pitcher on deck to three and two. Big crowd tonight. Looks like over 34 to 35,000 in the yard. Rendon base hit up the middle. His first career hit in 12 at bats against Dylan G. Oh, G almost got this. Watch Dylan G's glove try to do the around the back thing right there. Just got past him. Ground ball up the middle. Nice piece of hitting. Jordan Zimmerman six sacrifice bunch this year 28 in his career with Lee Vaughn departed a while ago. He is the best bunter on the pitching staff. Doesn't even make an offer well outside. Well Wilbur Flores is charging too hard and Jordan Zimmerman is the kind of guy that has the option to pull the bat back on his own if he wants. And there's a controlled charge at third base and there's what Wilmer Flores is doing right now and he's kind of backing up a little bit but he is charging hard and he is right on top of Jordan Zimmerman. He's going to butcher boy this one out to short and the runner was going just as good as a sacrifice. Rendon on the move and Jordan Zimmerman gets him to scoring position one out. Well you know, that was put on right there by the fact that Flores was too close the first time up. You see him right there. He backed off a little bit. He was about three steps towards Zimmerman the pitch before. So that's why that play was put on. Little butcher boy hit and run executed perfectly. And yeah, some knucks in the dugout for Jordan. Nicely done. Yeah, your point well taken. If he pulls that, that bounces over the third baseman's head and well down the left field line. And with Rendon running, that might score on a play like that. Here's Denard Spann, who has 37 RBIs. Pulled the ball first time to Ike Davis. And the breaking ball comes in from the outside. Nineteen for fifty. With five walks during his hitting streak tying a career high at twelve games. Now some teams will have when you have a pitcher up there that can have a bat they'll have a sign that is a bunt sign with an option meaning you have the option right now to pull the bat back and slap it by somebody usually early in the game when the run doesn't mean anything then you have the bunt sign that means you're bunting no matter what and I have a feeling that Trent Jewett right there and Davey Johnson decide to let Jordan Zimmerman swing away and we like the fact that they started the runner it's good baseball. Oh and two to spin. We like to throw terms up on the screen occasionally. The old butcher boy that Jordan Zimmerman just did. Sam the butcher from the Brady Bunch. It's named after him. Really? No. Now that I, I didn't know. Made that up too. Pulls the bat back slightly. Not a full swing. You've got to have a pitcher who can do some different things at the plate to get that done. 
Zimmerman's one of those kind of guys. Span right side. Nice pick by Daniel Murphy to his left. Two outs. And third base for Rendon with Zimmerman coming up. A yeah, nice play by Murphy right there, ranging far to his left. That ball looked like it had a chance to get into right field and score Rendon. Murphy, a guy known more for his offense than his defense at second base, made a really nice play. Ryan Zimmerman, 61 RBIs. And over his last 10 games, batting nearly 370. Now that batting average with runners in scoring position has slipped a little lately. It's at 293. But he's been at 310, 315 most of the season. And a good take on a slider away to get the count in his favor. Big time. In the air to right. And Andrew Brown is under it. Nats will get a big time leadoff blast from Wilson Ramos. He's one homer away from joining that double digit club. So that's his ninth, his 28th career home run, and the Nats blast their way on top. our wounded warriors salute them wave our ball caps it's our navy federal credit union troop recognition four million members four million stories navy federal credit union and even jordan zimmerman takes a moment or two out from his warm-up tosses to salute those who make it possible for him to be out on the field with his battery mate for us to be in the booth and for us to all enjoy the amazing freedoms we have in this country Another home run. Ramos goes deep. $250 more to the Children's National Medical Center. Thanks to our D.C. area Lexus dealers. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Jordan Zimmerman against the man who's the key matchup for him in the Mets lineup tonight, Daniel Murphy. Fly ball to center field first time. Nine for 32 career with three home runs. That was his 36th pitch, 26th strike. And Murphy gets one by Zimmerman for the first base hit of the game for the Mets. That's Murphy's 151st hit. Against the Nats this year? <laughs> no, against everybody. But a good portion of them against our pitching staff. Seems like it, right? He's such a tough out. Nice piece of hitting right there. Pretty good job of staying with a, a good pitch down the zone. Goes the other way. Nice effort by Ryan Zimmerman at third. 
but the first knock of the night for the Mets. Jordan goes to the stretch for the second time. And a face Andrew Brown who was a key out in that first inning when he fouled him out down the right field line. Rendon went and got it through at home and speedy Eric Young had to stay at third base. Inside the numbers with STG Inc. Best records at home last two seasons. I mean, Max Scherzer's been crazy this year. You know he'd be at the top of the list. So a couple of National League guys there. The Reds, Matt Lato, Sam the Nats, Jordan Zimmerman. Serious gas up and away. Uncatchable. 0-2. A check swing. Foul tip. Well, you remember last down in Kansas City, the pitch for Jordan was the slider. I mean, it was filthy all night long. It's a pitch that he didn't feature in the previous outing. But had a good feel for it against the Royals and was dominant with the seven strikeout, one walk performance. Yeah, one out short of going eight innings for the seventh time this year. Anthony Rendon under a towering pop up, one out. Ike Davis and Juan Lagares now, the next two Mets. Ike Davis is an interesting situation for New York. He's arbitration eligible at the end of the season. And last year he hit 227. This year he's hitting just above 200. And they're at kind of a loss to explain what's happened to his batting average. I mean, he hit 302 two years ago. Didn't play a lot of games. He was hurt that year. He's been swinging better for the Mets. He's seeing the ball better, kind of commanding the strike zone a little bit better, and having a good August. And as we say that, he puts the Mets on top with an opposite field shot to the bullpen. Even last year when he hit 227, he hit 32 home runs. 2 1 New York. Yeah, coming into tonight, 292, 12 runs scored, seven doubles, two home runs in a month. His 477 on base percentage, seventh best in the majors, and he gets a fastball away from Jordan Zimmerman. And it seems to be where the ball's carried tonight here at Nats Park and to his own bullpen to give his team a two to one lead. Good swing. Wasn't a bad pitch, but Ike Davis, a good low ball hitter, got one right in his turbo zone. That's where he likes it. Mets have now hit 115 home runs, 10th in the league, and that's number nine for Ike Davis, his second career against Zimmerman. Juan Lagares reaching. NO2 with one out. That was Jordan Zimmerman's 18th home run given up. Way outside. Looked like a fastball for a while. And Jordan Zimmerman, his second strikeout. Nissan will track it. You see the whole sequence away and then goes with the slider right there at 86 on the black. Lagares the thought he saw a fastball, got a slider, good pitch. Now give up a home run, two run homer right back in the strike zone. Get yourself a K. Not rattled a bit and 
You really never see Jordan Zimmerman rattled at all. There's Wilmer Flores. From Valencia, Venezuela. Signed with the Mets on his 16th birthday back in 07. Struck out looking first time. And Zimmerman, as always, working quickly. Nice slider. Good dive on that. Two on homer by Ike Davis. Mets have the lead with Harper. Jason Worth and Ian Desmond coming right up. I don't know who is that. What is that? Cow? Killer reindeer? I thought maybe Blitzen gone bad. I don't know. I thought he was maybe a how now brown cow, I guess. Tom Jefferson, easy win. Bottom of the fourth inning. Harper, Worth, and Desmond. Visit Kia.com to learn why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. And against right handed pitching this year, Bryce Harper, way up there at 318. It's about 30, almost 40 points above his regular average worth. I mean, his numbers are pretty much the same across the board against everybody. And Ian Desmond will pick up a bat and a helmet here in just a moment. Big breaking ball from Dylan G with a lead to work with for the first time. Harper bounced out to second on an off speed pitch first time. No balls, two strikes. We well, see how Travis Darno framed that. And you know, talking to the Mets people today, they said he's as good as anybody framing the low pitch and presenting it as a strike. Watch his hands right here. Boop, just that little turn gets the call. That might have been down, but talk about having soft hands on a low pitch. That was impressive. Had Harper reaching again. Murphy. Rice hustling down the line out by a step. Bottom of the fourth, one out. And the 8 o'clock hour arrives in a great baseball night at Nationals Park. Big crowd on hand. Trying to see if this ball club can make it four in a row and nine of the last ten. Also shooting for a 15 to 5 run. If they could win tonight. Worth called out on strikes first time. Dylan G got ahead of him. And then took a fastball. Swinging it right back to the outside corner. Dylan G 27 years of age from Cleburne Texas Dallas area. Went to the University of Texas Arlington. That's took him in the 21st round in 07. 
career record 30 and 24. They've lost Jeremy Hefner who will have Tommy John surgery. So along with the Matt Harvey situation just a lot of problems on their pitching staff and not much from Johan Santana in the last two years. That ball over near the barrier and just deep enough into the dugout. Slots tables and dining the ultimate triple play Hollywood Casino Charlestown races. Well, McCutcheon going crazy for the Pirates by the way they lead tonight two nothing over St. Louis and worth right behind him. Guys getting on base Jason came into this game with an on base percentage of 406. Which would be the third best in the National League. Fast ball up. Worth staying alive. He's done a great job of extending at bats. With a very productive hitter right behind him. Well, the, the one thing that G did last time run that fastball back, you have to hit that spot. We've seen Worth locked in like he is go out the other way. That's the danger of throwing that pitch. And, and they go change up right there. But if you're going to throw that two seamer on the outer half, a lot of times for a right hander to a right hander, it can run back right down the plate. And a 2 2 hit right at Wilmer Flores at third. Couple of quick outs for Dylan G here in the fourth inning. And that's what he does. His 3.56 pitches per batter face this season is the second lowest mark in the major. So he's a guy that's going to throw strikes, but he's also a guy you got to elevate. He'll leave something out over the plate for you. It's just a matter of in that at bat, do you get that pitch and what do you do with it? Yeah, this is interesting. In his last eight starts, he has induced 74 fly ball outs the most in the majors tonight. He's got nine ground ball outs in this game. Nine of his first 11. He's keeping the ball down nice. He's changing speeds nice and. Desmond sounded like he cracked his bat. Another ground ball. Flores takes care of it. Ten ground ball outs in four innings, and Dylan G operating well with a 2-1 lead. On the Cell Express, and if you don't know by now that there's 16 daily departures between D.C. and New York, I cannot help you. Book now at Amtrak.com. Two to one as we head to the top of the fifth story of this game. Good pitching, but a couple of mistakes and some long balls. Wilson Ramos with his ninth home run of the year. Put the Nats up one to nothing. Low line drive into the Nats bullpen, or into the Mets bullpen, excuse me. Strong leg Buffalo. And Ike Davis going the same spot pretty much. Well, two seamer down the way rides it into the Mets bullpen once again. 
to give the Mets a two to one lead. Seven eight nine for New York. Darno, Quintanilla, and G. Top of the fifth. That ball hit hard out to left center. That's going to hit the wall out at about the 385 mark. And Travis Darno breaks an 0 for 8 with an extra base hit. And he was a guy that came into this game in a big time scuffle. And he's jumping on the first pitch right there. You see Ramos wanted it outside. The ball kind of ran back all over the first pitch. A little ambush piece for a leadoff double here in the fifth. Good swing. Fractured his foot in April. Played seven games at double A. 19 at triple A. And the Mets called him up. Omar Quintanilla, a good Batman. As far as moving runners and all that. But the pitcher is on. So he's probably trying to drive a run in here. He bounced out to Rendon over at second base his first time up. Yeah, you know, I'm sure I'll get some help on the internet during the break, but Darno has a lowercase d for the first letter in his last name. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. D apostrophe A R N A U D. And they have another guy, Matt Dendecker, the same way, lowercase <laughs> d. Yeah, Dendecker from New Jersey. And of course, Travis Arno and his brother Chase, who plays for the Pirates, Long Beach guys. I don't think I've ever seen a last name start with a lowercase letter before. Let alone two on the same squad. <laughs> and both D. It's got to be some sort of major league re record. Call Elias right now. Quintanilla. That's not a good result for the Mets. Ball in front of the runner, so having to stay is Darno. And a 6 3 engineered by Zimmerman, Annie, and Desmond. Right now, you can bid on game used items from your favorite Nats. Available items like bats, game used baseballs, caps, lineup cards, and jerseys. Go to nationals.com slash auction. It ends Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Dylan G, little bouncer in front of the plate first time. And he'll pull that ball foul. So he has six hits and 48 at bats this year. And he's 0 for 3 career against Jordan Zimmerman. The breaking ball away. I mean, is it French? You would think so. Right. You think a guy that played in Montreal for four years would know that, but not everybody had names on the back of their shirts. Swing and a miss on a ball low and away. Four strikeouts for Jordan Zimmerman, two outs here in the fifth. Some K's for kids, $37 times four now to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. It's thanks to our D.C. area Toyota dealers helping children and their families with Toyota case for kids. Eric Young has walked stolen a base and grounded out. He's grounded out again. How about Jordan Zimmerman? Lead off walk in the first, shut the door. Lead off double in the fifth, shut the door in a 2-1 game.
sure seem to be a lot of smiles around this house lately. Nats on a roll. Down by a run to the Mets. Let's go inside the numbers again with STG Inc. 285 batting average this month, as you see Rick Shu, who's very pleased about that number. So this would be the first time since 02 the Nats would have such lofty success leading the league in hitting. 276, Arizona. They're second. And would we count uh, 31 more hits during the Miami series? Adam Roche bounced out to the third baseman. Wilmer Flores, who's playing in a second base position right now. Shortstop Omar Quintanilla is the only man on the left side of the infield. Pretty efficient night for Dylan G trying to beat the Nats for the seventh time in nine decisions career. So I got to the, the bottom of the Arno thing. The D is French. It, it means of or from. Yeah. And Arno means people. He's a man of the people. He is. Same guy, third baseman over there. And of course, we have a La Roche on the ball club. Big L, little A, big R. Here's a big R right here. <laughs> Ramos. I mean, that was a low laser beam of a line drive. He had out of here leading off the third inning. Well, if I ever have any problems with Mr. Met, he's my guy, Wilson. Because he's a Met killer, and he could help me out with that mascot thing I got going. Maybe you could be in the next commercial and have lunch with Mr. Met and no. the Philly fanatic. That ain't happening. <laughs> you could take Screech along. <laughs> Pluck out his eyes. Okay, you did. Look out here, two and zero. Oh. G will give up some home runs. Twenty-one this year. Green light. Oh yeah. Runs up and in. None of those pitches that close. Wilson Ramos on for the second time. That's have only had three base runners. Him twice. And the man walking in, Anthony Rendon, who singled up the middle after the homer third inning. Gavin DeGraw will be here tomorrow night after the 7.05 game against the Metropolitans. Game tickets at $10 starting and put in nationals.com slash Nats Live. You must have a valid game ticket that says August 31st. What a musical weekend this is. Labor Day coming on Monday. The Nats will be in Philadelphia for the holiday. There's Anthony Rendon. Good at bat his first time up ground ball up the middle. He's now five for 14. In his last five ball games. And suddenly losing the strike zone Dylan G he'll get a visit from Travis Darno six balls in a row. This where as a hitter, it's not an automatic take. You know, I've, I've had some managers who say, well, six in a row, what'd you swing for? There's two ways you can handle this. He's due to throw one right down the middle. I'm going to jump on it. Or you, you automatically take because he's thrown six in a row. I think you do the former. I think you look for a pitch right down the middle and you're looking to do some damage, especially hitting eight. Yeah, but make it a great pitch, right? Yeah, on a tee, right where you want it. Right where he wanted it, but it's up the middle. To the bag one, Quintanilla throws double play, inning over. And Jordan Zimmerman will have to lead off the sixth. Dylan G, again, working well with the lead.
IdentiQuest, who reminds you to smile. It's Friday. Affordable coverage for priceless smiles. Ask your broker about IdentiQuest. It's a curly W of baseballs here at Nationals Park. Top of the six, 2-3-0 Mets, 1-2-0 Nats. For the Achiever in you, PNC Bank, with our minor league report. And from that amazing ball club down at Gulf Coast League, Hector Silvestri, a left-handed pitcher, 20 years of age, from the Dominican. It's only his third professional season. So he went 7-0 with a 182 ERA. And FP, I know you've been tracking that ball club on a daily basis. How about the final record those guys had? I have because I'm an extreme front runner. They won their first game their playoff game today, 6-1 to one over the Pirates Gulf Coast affiliate. Drew Ward hit a home run and a double, so that takes the record to 50-9 and nine this year. And their slogan, bring on the Dodgers. <laughs> hey, you beat Bradenton one game in a row, you're ready for the Dodgers, let me tell yeah, you. They want Miguel Cabrera to come down there. They want the Tigers, too. <laughs> well, if Tigers will finish the season in Miami, we could maybe... Able be able to work that out. That's the record for domestic record for best regular season winning percentage. The only team to do better than that was the 1992 rookie level Dominican Summer League Blue Jays, who were 68 and 2. Six, oh my God! What happened on those two games? <laughs> Mets box score. You can wrap it all up and put it in the fourth inning. Lead off hit by Daniel Murphy. One out later, Jordan Zimmerman gave up an opposite field Ike Davis home run. So both the left-handed batters took him the other way to get those runs. He's only given up one other hit. First pitch breaking ball to Andrew Brown, who has popped up twice to Rendon. Mercedes-Benz will track it. Yeah, good late break on the slider right there. Tough to pick up. Rides the fastball back to the corner. One of his best heaters of the night right there. And Andrew Brown did not go up the ladder. Ike Davis the home run man next. Man, that is nasty on the breaking ball. Big time drop on that. Strikeout number five. Well, stuff has been there all night for Jordan. His job to keep it right here at two to one. They made the one mistake, if you want to even call it that, to Ike Davis. But you look at the curveball right there, great leg break. And the reason he wants to keep this at two to one is the Mets bullpen this year against the Nationals 0 and 4 with a 7 1 8 ERA. They don't have their closer, Bobby Parnell, right now either. He's on the DL. Latroy Hawkins is their closer. Good looking fastball up around the letters to Ike Davis. Fly to left and then homeward to left. Jordan's working so fast, <laughs> he's holding that left arm back to get time from Brian Knight. When Zimmerman smells the end of an inning, things start happening very quickly. Yeah, I think I might have mistakenly called that pitch to Ike Davis a fastball that he hit out. I think it was a changeup. And this time you see Jordan going with the heat first two pitches to get ahead 0 2. Target in and up. Kind of missed his spot, but he didn't miss the third baseman. Ryan Zimmerman over to LaRoche, and we're going to the bottom of the six. Zimmerman will lead off. Nets down by one.
a run on two hits. So as we go to Julie, bottom of the sixth inning, starting pitching, focusing in on here. Julie and the Nats have been pretty solid lately. Absolutely, and there was a lot of question as to who was going to start in Sunday night's game. That would be the fifth starter slot. Would it be Steven Strasburg, who only pitched two innings on Wednesday before the rain delay, or would it be Ross Ohlendorf, or would it be rookie Tanner Roark? So Davey Johnson decided to use Tanner Roark in last night's game in those last two innings, the eighth and the ninth, where he came in for some relief in order to save his bullpen. He thought he would be best suited due to his durability. Steven Strasburg not wanting to be taken off his regular day's rest. And so it will be Ross Ollendorf will be starting on Sunday night. Third game of the series here against the Mets. Jordan Zimmerman will pop it up. Four infielders converge. Pitcher gets out of dodge. And Ike Davis makes the grab. Nats box score. You can wrap it all up in the second inning. With a Ramos leadoff homer. Rendon then a base hit. And the Nats have only had one other base runner. Ramos walking in the fifth. A race in a double play. Dylan G, 13 ground ball outs. Steve McCaddy said yesterday that another reason for not bringing Strasburg back early, the fact that there was a little bit of irritation in his back during that start the other night. They just want to keep him on his regular routine here. So the big windup is going to get the ESPN Sunday night baseball start. How about that? We'll probably get 48 different angles of that windup. Break it down. That'll be nice. Well, hopefully the Nats will have a good Friday and Saturday. Dan Heron, Zach Wheeler tomorrow night. And Span will guide that ball out to center, but Quintanilla eyed it quickly and got out there. And Denard Span's hitting streak on the line. He's now 0 for 3. Speaking of upcoming games, next five. Heron and Wheeler. Jonathan Neese and Ollendorf on Sunday night. Then it's on to Philly for three. The Nats will play three night games at Philadelphia. Have Thursday off, then go to Miami and New York on that trip. Ryan Zimmerman. Bouncing ball to third behind the back. Flores made a good play to throw him out. Then a fly ball to right. Counts even 1 1. Two starters who get the ball and they're ready to work. Well, third time through has been a problem. Zimmerman cracks one to left. Loud sound. Flores couldn't reach it. And the Nats have their third base hit. And that gets Harper to the plate here in the sixth inning. Well, you start to see if Dylan G's getting tired. That's elevated. Now he's been down the zone all night long. That's why he's been successful up to this point. Just the third hit of the night for the Nationals. And. You wonder if he's getting a little bit gassed with that elevated fastball right there for a Ryan Zimmerman single. Twice tonight, Dylan G's gotten ahead of Bryce Harper. Had him reaching on two strike counts for off speed stuff away and bouncing out to second. But Bryce has had three hits and a home run against this right hander. Well, that's a good throw over right there by Terry Collins and, and the only thing he's doing is is telling Ryan Zimmerman hey we're not forgetting about you over here because Ryan's the kind of guy that will steal a base if you don't pay attention to him smart throw over Bryce Harper kind of turned his shoulders and stepped out in a hurry after taking a fastball right in there yeah Hit himself in the head with the bat. He sat on something soft right there. He got a fastball right down the middle. G outguessed him. Then he gets another one. 0 2. 
Nissan will track strike two. Well, Bryce Harper's telling everybody in the ballpark that he's sitting soft right here off G. Took two fastballs for strikes. That one to a corner. Good location. But Dylan G in challenge mode right now, and Harper's sitting soft. And then a breaking ball that Bryce hits one third time in a row to Murphy. 14 ground ball outs for Dylan G. And this 2-1 game into the seventh inning. In the fourth, Nationals only run the Wilson Ramos blast, the unpredictability of baseball one night to the other, coming off a series with 31 hits against the Marlins and two starting pitchers really doing a great job in this one. Well, Dylan G's done this to the Nats before on June 29th, six hits, one run. Before that, nine hits, one run, seven strikeouts, and three hits, no runs a time before that. So, although the Nats have beat Dylan G recently, he's doing the same old, same old. So, he's same old G here tonight. Against the Nats, if he's kept the ball down nice, you just hope that he gets tired, ele starts to elevate the yeah. ball, and you get in that bullpen. Yeah, kind of out of character for him with all the ground ball outs tonight, because over his last eight starts, throwing as many fly balls as any pitcher in baseball. So Jordan Zimmerman's got to keep this close. Juan Lagares leads off top seven. That was pitch number 69 and strike number 54. How about that ratio? That one under the glove of Adam LaRoche. That's the second time Lagaris has hit the ball hard tonight. Lined out to Desmond earlier. And that will be ruled upon shortly. That ball was really hit hard. It was. But we've seen Adam LaRoche make this play before. Just kind of went under his glove right there. Ball hit hard. Had a little hair on it after the hop. So we still haven't ruled on it yet. I'd say hit. I would agree with that. Matter of fact, I already put up my scorecard, so it's official. Mets have their leadoff man aboard. That's the most important thing. And here's Wilmer Flores. And he goes up swinging from the heels. Right now, somebody's looking at too many replays to make that scoring call. Slow bouncer Desmond takes the sure one and LaRoche spins out of the way of the runner. So Lagaris at second base with one out here in the seventh every 90 feet crucial in this game. Potomac Nationals one of four Washington minor league clubs heading for postseason play. It all gets underway September 4th through the 6th at Fitzner Stadium in Woodbridge. Get season tickets for next year or playoff tickets for this year. 
703-590-2311 or PotomacNationals.com. That was a base hit for Juan Lagares, and here's Travis Darno. Hard slider, 85. Good strike. And then another slider. This one off the end of the bat. Here comes Denard Span. Long way to go, and he gets there to make it easy. It at least looked that way. Two down. And now you have the classic National League situation with the number eight hitter coming up in first base open. Tonight's copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Steve McCaddy will pay a visit. See, this is where he's going to ask Jordan Zimmerman. Maybe even Ian Desmond and Wilson Ramos, how they feel about pitching to Omar Quintanilla right here. And a lot of ball clubs will choose to walk the eight hole guy in this situation, especially this late in the game, and especially with the way that Dylan G is pitching tonight. He's shown that he's going to be very stingy with hits and runs. So, you know, Terry Collins not going to go to his bullpen, so there's no threat, nobody up, and this is G's ball game all the way. So if you walk Quintanilla, you're facing. Dylan G who's hitting in the low 100s. So they break it up and we'll see how they approach. Omar Quintanilla. Two 15 pitch innings tonight. The second when he went one two three and then the fourth when he had the base hit in the home run. One of Jordan's most efficient outings of the year so far, but Dylan G just a click better. Keaton, he had two ground balls tonight, one to second, one to short. And they're going to pitch to him, and there's a challenge fastball for a strike. This is a batter who has three career hits and a walk against Jordan Zimmerman. This late, I'm a big fan of going after the pitcher. But there's two schools of thought, and you know, I played for Dusty Baker. I've said it before. He would always go after the eight-hole guy, thinking I want that pitcher leading off the next inning. Felipe Alou, a guy that said I'm going to make a pitcher beat me every chance I have. So there's two schools of thought on how you go about this. And a ball to right, and Worth is right there. So, school of thought. This one wins out, challenging the number eight man. Beautiful night in D.C. And the seventh inning stretch brought to you by the Hyundai Clearance Countdown. Visit your local Hyundai dealers this weekend. Watching some kind of outstanding pitcher's duel tonight.
Benz of Arlington and Mercedes Benz of Alexandria. And welcome back to the pitchers duel, two to one, and it's been about Dylan G. We talked about the orange he has on the Nationals a couple of times this year, but today he's been done a nice job of keeping the ball down in the zone. Lots of ground ball out, 74 pitches, 44 of those for strikes, but the majority of the strikes. The lower half of the strike zone in Jordan Zimmerman's been every bit as good 78 pitches 61 of those for strikes so absolutely pounding the strike zone give up the home run to Ike Davis and that's been it 14 ground outs. Here's worth who has struck out and grounded out to third and that's. A front door breaking ball that stayed inside. And a pitch over the plate, hammered to center, but cruising for it, Lagaris. The ball went about 390 for the first out. Ian Desmond, AT&T fact of the game. So he would only be the third man in franchise history from Andre Dawson, who went back to back a couple of times, and Vladimir Guerrero, of course, to go 2020. Ian, of course, last year had. 25 home runs. There's Hawk. And he stole 21 bases in 27 attempts last year. I don't, I don't know if Nats fans realize this, but Vladimir Guerrero, the originator of the run till they tag you offense. That guy, <laughs> when he was 19 years old and got called up to the Expos, he swung at every pitch and he ran past every base. And he threw every ball over every cutoff man. And I mean, you talk about a guy that just was raw talent, hitting 330 at the major league level, and really having no idea what he was doing early in his career when he was 19. Unbelievable. Desmond saw a fastball up, but it was too high up that ladder. Mercedes Benz will show it. Yeah, two pitches away, one pitch up. There's a little reaction from G right there. Did you see after the pitch? Yeah, because Travis Darno walked out to the mound right away, and Dylan G had turned his back and walked down the back of the mound. And the last thing the Mets need is another injured starting pitcher. It was immediate after the pitch. Do not watch the pitch. Watch Dylan G. It's after right here. And he felt something, and he turned around back to the catcher, and basically telling everybody that he felt something. Tries to. Tell everybody that he's okay. But they saw what we saw, and they're yeah. out there checking him out right now. Well, and, and they say that uh, in Matt Harvey's situation, they couldn't pinpoint it to one pitch. You know, when Steven Strasburg hurt himself in Philadelphia, he just walked right off the mound after a pitch that obviously gave him great discomfort and pain. And it was a lot more subtle than that with Harvey. So the Mets, they're just in a mindset to be totally careful about everything right now. One two pitch and then he spins a really good breaking ball to strike out Ian Desmond only his second K of the night. Well the whole thing with Harvey in hindsight being 2020 you know I don't normally get caught up in other ball clubs business but I tweeted something on July 9th about him throwing 121 pitches in a seven inning game in a 3 3 tie against the San Francisco Giants and when you have a young franchise guy. You, know, you, you don't want to baby him too much, but when you're talking about 121 pitches in seven innings and a franchise guy like that, to me, you extend the guy if he's going for his first career shutout to where, you know, you want to have him feel what it's like to stand on that mound for the 27th out. But to extend him that much in the seventh inning of a tie ball game, to me, was very, very curious. I mean, almost like it was a playoff game or a pennant race, and neither one were the case. Adam LaRoche, two of the 14 ground ball outs tonight. And that's going to be a line drive right at Daniel Murphy. So he has hit right into the shift three times. And this game is now into the eighth inning.
the road for the mix. Although they've beaten him, the Nats have one time already this year. Five runs in less than five innings. And then Dan Heron on quite a streak. 4-0 with a save. And a 198 ERA over his last seven games. Six of those starts. We'll get you going with Johnny and Ray. Nats extra at 630. Then the ball game at 705. That'll be game two and some work to be done tonight. This ball game into the eighth inning. Mets two, Nationals one. Only seven hits in the game. How about some bonus e-cash and multi-year price locked in? Become a 2014 season plan holder right now. It's available. This deal expires tonight, or rather uh, September 30th, pardon me, one month from tonight. Visit nationals.com slash 2014 and some restrictions apply. A strike to Dylan G. Fernando Abad's up. Because the Nats would have to hit for Zimmerman in the bottom of the eighth. Unless they could tie or take the lead with the two hitters before him. And Dylan G late for that swing. You know, I think Dylan G might have thought that the pitch before the one that Ian Desmond chased high was a strike. And if the one he chased above his head was strike three, and that's why he turned around, not because of an injury, but because he thought it might have been strike three. Hmm. The pitch before a borderline pitch that was called a ball, so maybe he thought it was a strike, and then Desmond chased the high fastball for strike three, and there's nothing wrong with him other than he kind of lost track of the count. But I think Terry Collins thought the same thing we thought, that there might be something wrong. You know, outs are coming so quickly tonight, I could see that happening. I mean things are happening so quickly with both of these starters that's six strikeouts for Jordan Zimmerman top of the order here's Eric Young 0 for two with a walk line drive right at Rendon on the changeup had him just enough out ahead now Murphy with two outs bases empty 83 pitches 61 percent heat well wow. One out away from going at least eight for the seventh time this year. Last time he went eight innings, June 20th against the Rockies. Within and out of that, last time at Kansas City. I'll tell you what, if this game was in July. Wouldn't be dark enough for the fireworks. And it would be in July. <laughs> Wise decision to have fireworks after a game on the last Friday of August. One ball, one strike. That ball slapped right by Ryan Zimmerman. Harper over to get it. This could be interesting. The throw into second, not in time. Murphy, his usual two hit night against the Nats. We mentioned earlier he was the one guy that presented the toughest matchup for Jordan Zimmerman tonight at least coming into the game Mike Davis is homered but this guy's two for four well if you remember that day night double header I think unofficially Daniel Murphy had like 15 hits in those two games combined maybe not that much as he gets a little stumble right there coming into second base and a lot of times if you keep that tag on him right here that foot might come off so that's why you'll see guys keep that glove on the runner you're not far off in that double header he had six hits plus a walk and in the first game, hit two home runs, drove in five. He had a good week that day and that night here. He did. There's Andrew Brown, who's been retired three straight times.
One ball, one strike. Great crowd tonight. They've seen an outstanding pitcher's duel. Maybe they didn't expect to see it or hope to see it. 35,008. Well, when you come to the ball game today, you're thinking, well, Jordan Zimmerman on the mound, great. Nats are swinging the bat, great. They're playing ball, got momentum. But in the back of your head, you're thinking, well, that whole Dylan G thing and how he's handled the Nationals for the most part all season long. That was the one thing you'd look at this game and say, that's the wild card, and G has been fantastic all night long. Not easy to pitch against the same team five times in one season, and we might see him again. It's a fast ball up and a ball that was fouled straight down. After Miami, the Nationals will play a four game series in New York. Season series, 7 5 Washington, 4 and 2 here. Crowd wants this game into the bottom of the eighth inning right now, right where it is. Front door curveball stayed inside. Still got two pitches to work with. And Fernando Abad may be the man for Ike Davis. Zimmerman, good pick. Long throw. LaRoche comes off the bag. Maybe a throw that shouldn't have been made. And Daniel Murphy scores. It's three to one. Murphy never stopped. I mean, I'm sure that's a, a play that in hindsight, Ryan Zimmerman will tell you he shouldn't have made the throw because Murphy was roaring around the bag. And I don't think he had a chance at first base at all. You know, the instinct is to make a great play, bail your pitcher out, but you see Adam LaRoche coming off the base. This is where LaRoche realizes that Murphy is roaring around third base. Well, you go arm pump right there, arm fake. He got Murphy by a mile at home, but that is hindsight being 2020. And what a game pitched by Jordan Zimmerman. Deserves a better fate. Yeah, Randy Knorr comes out, comes out to make the pitching change. Second straight game, Jordan Zimmerman goes seven and two thirds. This call to the bullpen package by the UPS store. We love logistics. Lula hot sauce, a hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. Available in original flavor, chili lime, chili garlic, and chipotle. And we're going to go back to the second inning. And Wilmer Flores, a little 95 mile an hour paint. Run back fastball for a called third looking. Fernando Abad for his 33rd appearance of the season. And he has an assignment to get Ike 
Davis out. The pinch runner is Matt Dendecker for Andrew Brown. They didn't assess an error on that throw by Ryan Zimmerman. I wonder if that means they gave Andrew Brown an RBI. Ike Davis is one for four career against Fernando Abad. Yeah, where would the error be? I mean, it was a throw to LaRoche. Well, I, and I think the official score figured even if it was on target and a throw like that fl floating over there, Murphy would have still scored. And, and the only and Adam did the right thing. He came off the bag and tried to get some control on that throw, but he might not have had time to throw the guy out at home. Well, the only thing that Ryan couldn't see was the runner because he was going to the backhand. So in his defense, you know, you look at it and say, well, why did he throw it? Why didn't he go arm fake? When you're backhanding the ball like he was, his back is to the plate. So he has no idea where the runner is. I mean, that's a lot to process in a couple of seconds to think, well, he might just keep going here. I mean, the instinct is to get the out. And when your back's to the play, you can't see yeah. that the runner hasn't uh, slowed down, throttled down, and then he's going full speed in the third base. If, if you're feeding that, feeling that conventionally style to where you can see the runner peripherally out of the corner of your eye, then maybe you think about, you know, pump fake. And, but obviously you're going to make the play routinely. He had no idea that Murphy was running that hard and was thinking about scoring it. If he had eyes in the back of the head, he wouldn't have thrown it. Pretty good rip by Davis. Two balls, two strikes. So this is what I'm talking about. Watch Ryan Zimmerman's back in relation to the play. So chopper down the line. Watch. There's no way he can see where Murphy is at all. Based on his back is to the play. So he's thinking I got to get the out. And he has no idea that Murphy is running hard and coming hard to the base and not slowing down at all. A bod walk sock Davis to on two outs. I mean, should he have thrown it hindsight? No, but how is he to know where the runner is and what he's thinking? It's all he's thinking is I'm going to make the play and bail my pitcher out who's pitched a whale of a ball game here and watch Daniel Murphy come whizzing by. Good read by Murphy. He's a good baseball player. Sure it's a is. heads up play. Now a bot against Juan Lagares. And Desmond, the short way to Rendon. The Mets get a big run. The Nats have the bottom three coming up. Ramos, Rendon, and then a pinch hitter. It's 3-1 New York.
spots left. And just like we promised earlier in the game, it's not just a good time. It is big beer time, Miller time. And let's go back to Wilson Ramos and check out the Buffalo. Third inning, little slider backup piece right there from Dylan G. Ninth home run of the year, and that's the only run of the night so far for the Nationals. So G has pitched a whale of a game, and he is still in there right now for the New York Mets. Wilson Ramos has had a perfect night against him with a home run and a walk. Staying in, Matt Dendecker to bat third and play center field. That moves Juan Lagares over to right field. Eighty three pitches, fifty one strikes for G, who has two career complete games. One of those this year. And that front door curveball, plenty of drop on it, and he missed. Right back to him. He had Ramos reaching. One out, bottom eight. Well, it could be an interesting choice for. Randy Knorr, if he is the one running the ball club right now, Davey hasn't been in the dugout for a while. If Rendon gets on base, he could go with Chad Tracy with the power. If Rendon doesn't, maybe Steve Lombardozzi against the right handed pitcher. Yeah, we don't know what's going on with Davey. We did see Lee Coons talking to him earlier in the game in the dugout, so maybe that back flaring up and Randy Knorr running the ship. He needs to put on the home run sign a couple of times. So right now Lombardozzi, but that could change if Rendon gets aboard, bringing the tying run into the batter's box. He's got some snap on that curveball here in the eighth inning. Rendon base it up the middle and a double play ball. Ryan Matthews, it appears, for the ninth. Fast ball up, one and two. Yeah, pitch number 89 coming from G. 54 strikes, 34 balls. That is paint at the knees. Two outs. Only his third K of the night. Well, I'll tell you what, Travis Darno has been so impressive. You, you talk about a young catcher with smooth hands. Look at that frame right there. I mean, he takes a borderline strike and makes it look like a clear strike. So. You know, some of the obvious things you don't always see with catchers is soft hands. Travis Darno is as good as I've seen all year at framing pitches, especially the low pitch, and that's saying a lot for a young guy. Steve Lombardozzi, 9 for 34 as a pinch hitter. And yeah, watch this last pitch and watch Darno's glove. He just, it's very simple. He just catches it and kind of rotates it up a half a turn. To take a borderline low pitch and make it look like a strike. Lombardozzi brings the power. See you later. Off the facing of the mezzanine out there. And Lombardozzi, second of the year, makes it a one run game. Well, it looked like Randy Nord did put on the home run sign to Steve Lombardozzi. And everyone at home that saw that one coming, raise your hand. No, you didn't. And a fastball in the inner half. And you see where Darno was setting it up, and all the fans knew it before it left the yard. Wow. And that's a big one, folks, off the back of the bullpen for Steve Lombardozzi. Clippered with the bare hand play. And just like that, back to a one run game. Here's Denard Spann. Nicely done. For the Nationals, their fifth pinch hit home run of the year. And Span will flare this one down the left side. Actually, their fourth. Scott Hairston had one with the Cubs. 
Lefty Scott Rice. Right hander Scott Atchison Rice has appeared in more games than any reliever in the National League. One one to spin. Who's hit a home run against Dylan G career. He'll bounce this one left side. It's going to take a good play to get him. Safe. Tying runs on base. About 40,000 umpires said safe at the same time. And that's a 13 game hitting streak, a new career high for Denard Spann. And it was just a little double clutch by Quintanilla at short. There was a difference. Watch. Catches it clean, can't get it out, goes into his glove twice, and with the speed of Spann, that's all it took. Ike Davis tried to cheat right there and get off the base. A tick early. You see Denard Spann low flying down the first baseline, and some umpires in the dugout, some umpires in the stands. That was cool. Everybody said safe at the same time, and now. Denard Spann looking to get into scoring position here for Ryan Zimmerman. Hitting streaks in progress. Desmond 0 for 3 tonight. Zimmerman has a hit. Spann has a hit. Bryce Harper is 0 for 3. Right now the only streak they care about is trying to win their fourth in a row as a team. And here's Ryan Zimmerman 1 for 3. And now Rafael Soriano has joined Ryan Matthews. And you would think Soriano, whether the Nats tie it or take the lead. Reels turning. Here we go. Buckle up. Zimmerman solid single to left. Last time up. On the corner. Another good frame by Darno. Another good pitch by G. Watch a subtle turn of the glove on the outer half to bring it back into the zone. Soft hands. And that breaking ball well outside. Dylan G not to 100 pitches yet. He's at 96. Probably would not face Bryce Harper if the inning was still going. That would be Scott Rice's assignment. Darno a decent arm back there. Nothing crazy. He can steal on him. And a throw that almost headed down the right field foul side. Ike Davis had to cross the bag to grab it. Throw that almost got Denard Span too. Nice play by Davis. Watch a little hesitation right there, and the tag was pretty close. A lot of guys just try to catch that ball. Ike Davis caught it and put a tag on. Zimmerman base hit. And that might finish Dylan G with Bryce Harper coming up. Zimmerman two for four. And the tying runs at second base and to the bullpen Terry Collins will go. Here they come. Three hits all night. Three in a row here in the eighth after two outs. Lombardozzi's homer got it going.
Bryce Harper's one for three career against Scott Rice. Bryce Harper chatting with Rick Shue. Jason Worth's going to lend an ear. Well, Rick Shue going to tell you what he's going to throw you, but he keep it simple. Get a game plan together, together, formulate it, get in the box, execute it. Bryce Harper likes the big stage, right man, the right spot. Scott Rice will be 32 in September. He pitched in the minor leagues for 14 years. And this year he leads the National League in appearances with 71 now. The fastball slider split, fastball 89, slider 81, split 81. Game on. Bryce is grounded out to second base three times tonight. Yeah, Dylan G really worked him over with off speed stuff. Lefty lefty match up here. Change it all with one swing. Crowd of 35,000 making a ton of noise. Maybe the loudest I've heard this ballpark all season. Yeah, this is the first night in a while. We've had a playoff feel. Harper lays off the fastball, running down and in. Ball two. Great take. That ball teased the strike zone for about 58 feet. Dropped out of it the last two feet. Count leverage for Harper. And you know they've got a right hander ready if this doesn't work the Mets. Harper swinging on three and oh. Bouncing ball, second baseman dropped. Plenty of time for Murphy to make the play. And Bryce Harper's 0 for 4. Steve Lombardozzi makes it close. Nats strand a couple, and into the ninth inning, they're one step closer. 3 2 Mets.
is ahead in the bottom of the ninth when Worth, Desmond, and LaRoche come up. Right now, the Nats have to keep this 3 2. MLB.TV celebrating 11 years. Catch the rest of this season in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. So Ryan Matthews 25th appearance trying to get that ERA down and just trying to get the sinker to sink and get command of the strike zone again. Yeah, I don't think it's a mechanical thing anymore with Ryan Matthews. It's more of an attitude thing and look for him to be far more aggressive with the fastball tonight. And just go right after these Mets hitters and keep this game right where it's at. We'll face Wilmer Flores for the first time under the watchful eye of Steve McCaddy. And then Travis Darno and then Omar Quintanilla. And right at Jason Worth on a 1 0 pitch. You can win a hitting lesson with Ryan Zimmerman if you are the winner in Masson's Touch Em All Rewards. Go to MassonSports.com. Sign up. You could win the grand prize. Travis Darno, one for three with a double. With Troy Hawkins functioning right now as the Mets closer with Bobby Parnell on the DL. Hawkins five saves, but he's blown three. Ryan Matthews, good fastball to get ahead. Well hit left field. Two for four night. Now we're starting to see why the Mets are so impressed with Travis Darno. You've noted his play behind the plate, handling of the pitching staff, and now his bat coming alive with a two hit night. And his hair coming out of his helmet. <laughs> He's got some antennas going right there, doesn't he? Put some tinfoil on those. It's been a hair raising evening at times. Next that up is Omar Quintanilla. Is awesome. Keaton a hot shot. Looks like a 4-6-3. Ryan Matthews known for ground ball outs, and here we go. Jason Worth, Ian Desmond, Adam LaRoche. Bottom of the ninth coming. of a three-game weekend series against the New York Mets. Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight, we invite you to stick around when the ball game is over. We'll be along with our Nets extra post-game show. Home runs tonight for the Nationals. Ramos and Lombardozzi with that big play in the eighth inning. Right now, the difference in the ball game, Ray. It really is, Johnny. A very tough play for Zim going back on a ball and uh, really one of those balls you have to eat. We saw that last year in a game against the Braves. 
where he tried to make a throw to second to get up to. But, you know, there's some plays you just can't make. And Ryan believes he can make all of them. But going away, knowing that you've got a good runner off of running off second base, you know, it's just a play that you might want to fake the throw. Uh, but there's no way that you can get uh, a good runner out in that situation. It's just one of those uh, unnecessary throws. Well, the Nationals have made it interesting here with a run in the bottom of the eighth. Let's see what they can do in the bottom of the ninth. How about Steve Lombardozzi, Bob, and FB with that big home run, his second of the year in the uh, eighth inning? Yeah, well, it's so big, we're going to make it. Our Kia drive of the games. Drive of the games brought to you by Kia. Visit Kia.com. Learn why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. Dylan G supposed to be away. Went to the turbo zone of Steve Lombardozzi. You just don't go there. Second home run of the year, and everybody pumped up in the Nats dugout. And you, you just got that feeling you had last year that they're just never out of any game all of a sudden. Lombardozzi's first career pinch hit home run. So all he can do now is watch and hope his teammates get this thing back even or go ahead and win it. This is Latroy Hawkins, the 40 year old right hander who's now closing for the Mets. Obviously, the most experienced guy on their staff. He does have. 93 career saves, but 28 of them came in 01 with Minnesota and 25 more with the 04 Cubs. So he's been a middle to setup guy forever. And the matchups first of all, Jason Worth, three for four career with a double and a home run off LaTroy Hawkins. No doubles defense by the Mets. Big gap in left center. And he runs that 91 to the outside corner. Yeah, fastball slider curveball change. Fastball averages 92. Pretty much fastball slider. There's the slider. That's outfield playing no doubles. I've seen outfields play deeper than that, so maybe just a couple steps back than normal. Not really guarding the line at first. Another slight piece, low and away, two and one. Tried to pull that outside pitch. It'll be a long throw for Quintanilla, and he plays it perfectly. Boy, that was a nice play. He had to give with that baseball to get the big hop. And it took one more tricky hop, and you're wondering if it was going to get under his glove as he kind of gave with it into center field. I mean, you talk about soft hands on the run. So watch him give with this baseball right there. Does the spin move. Plenty of time right on the money. Clutch play. And a one run baseball game in the bottom of the ninth. That was not an easy play. Great job by the shortstop. Desmond 0 for 2 career against Hawkins. 93 that time. A couple of ground balls, a strikeout for Desmond tonight. Right now, Brian Knight's giving him that strike. He'll stay out there. Yeah, pretty good command right here. The fastball, 93, just shaving that outside corner. Both pitches almost in the same spot. Might try to expand with the slider here, real too, and get a chase. Desmond serves it. Right side, Ike Davis there to nab it. Two outs. Couple of sharply hit balls here, and it'll be up to Adam LaRoche to keep it going. Watch Daniel Murphy, the second baseman, not Ike Davis, jump 
with Ike Davis. <laughs> they both jumped at the same time, and as the off-fielder, he was jumping for Ike Davis to get that ball. Adam LaRoche against LaTroy Hawkins' career, three for six. With a double, they've got the shift on with Wilmer Flores, the third baseman, by the umpire up the middle. And well into right field, Daniel Murphy, where he caught a line drive last time that wouldn't usually be a hit. Well, LaRoche with a look back right there. I don't think he liked that call. In the air, left field corner and slicing. Strike two. Some rally lids. Game over. LaRose drops his bat. Umpire walks away, and the Mets win it. 3-2. Well, you never see Adam LaRose argue, but he flipped his bat down on the plate, left his helmet laying right there, and it was a slider that he didn't think, obviously, was a strike. And check it out one more time. Everything away from Hawkins. And that one looked like it was down and away. But regardless, game over. I'll tell you what, you're not going to run the table. But that was a hard-fought battle. Didn't go the Nats way. And the best thing about tonight is you could see the fans into the baseball game, and they're believing again. And there's still a long way to go in this. So Dylan G beating Jordan Zimmerman. The Mets beat the Nats. And they'll have to try to draw back even tomorrow night. 3-2 New York. Join us tomorrow evening. 6.30 Nats Extra, and then the first pitch from Dan Heron at 7.05. This has been a massive presentation, a ball game that took two hours and 25 minutes. Johnny and Ray, Nats Extra post game coming up next, and from the booth at Nationals Park. So long for just a while.